Okay, so let's talk about how Juniper Networks uh, implements OSPF. We'll start our discussion with a brief uh, review of how OSPF works, and uh, we'll, we'll start there. So uh, when we look at this topology here, we see we have a, uh, a backbone area here. So let's go ahead and label that. And we see that we have two other areas. Now, uh, typically in OSPF, we're creating these other areas specifically to reduce the number of uh, either the flooding of the LSAs that's happening within the area or reduce the size of the LSA database. Maybe we have a small or underpowered router for some reason uh, and so we it just is not going to handle the load of a say the the backbone might be able to. So we would create these areas. The misconception is by simply by creating the areas we've made the LSA database smaller and that's not true. We have to actually go through and configure some additional options on the area. So for example, if we were to change this area from just a standard area into a stub area, and we'll talk about what that configuration looks like on the second part of this video, uh, we begin to see that immediately we've gotten rid of two types of LSAs that are flooding the network. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we only see uh, what what's internal to the network as well as these summary routes coming from other areas. So it really simplifies the overall um, uh, the overall look of what's happening inside this area. Uh, so if we were to take a minute here and actually display what this would look like, uh, so the backbone area here, all of the traffic that transits the network must cross the backbone if it's going from one side of the network to the other. That means that all of the, the various types of LSAs are going to exist uh, within the backbone. So any advertising that happens is going to come from the backbone. So for example, the inter-area packets of the three type are going to cross over here, right? Um, in addition, we'll get some three area types going this way. And We'll get some threes coming from, from the two, uh, number two area, whoops, should be a three, number two area, number two area. Um, and we'll have some threes coming from the number one area, right? So we're passing those back and forth. Now the difference between the stub area and the standard normal area is that with the stub area, that's the only uh, type of LSA that will cross the ASBR or the um, area border router. I'm sorry, not, this is an ABR, an area border router, not an ASBR, an ABR. However, this router over here also is an ABR, but we're also going to be sending the any type 4 and type 5. If we had, for example, if we had a, uh, a uh, and ASBR here inside the backbone area. We would be sending those over this way. And just like we have a, an ASBR here, we will be sending type uh, four and type five LSAs this way as well. So we'll be exchanging those, uh, in addition to the type threes, which we normally would, the type fours and type fives will also be going across as well. All right, so let's clean our picture up a little bit. And let's talk a little bit more about what are some of the other things that we could do to make this a little bit more efficient. Okay, so one of the things that we could do is instead of using the stub area, we could be even a little bit more efficient and turn this area into what's called a totally stubby area. In a totally stubby area, as we see here, we have one way into the area and one way out of the area. Okay, so in this scenario, uh, you'll notice that we only allow type 2, type 0, and a default route. So that means these, these threes are no longer allowed in, um, although we will advertise threes. It'll actually be this side that's advertising what's happening back here, uh, but we will no longer allow those three type LSAs 
uh, into the network. So let's get rid of those coming in. And the way we get out now um, is we apply a default route. We manually conflict, configure right uh, a zero slash zero route. And that's how we get out to the rest of the network. That three uh, LSA normally would provide us access and, and tell us how to get to the, the other networks that are located in the OSPF um, uh, architecture. Since we no longer have those threes, we have to configure a default route. Once that default route happens, we would then be able to use the LSAs that are in the remaining areas to go wherever we need to go. All right. So that's about as efficient as and as small as we could make these um, this this particular router, short of just actually configuring like a default route and maybe a couple of static routes. This is about the smallest we can do. So let's uh, let's do something with this site over here. We want to increase the efficiency and the size of the database of this area over here. So let's get rid of that normal area. And let's do something else. We're going to create this other type of stub area called a not so stubby area. Now a not so stubby area is essentially a stub area. However, we are allowing external routes, as we see here coming from BGP from an external router, external routes to be injected into OSPF as external routes. Um, so the impact of that is that we get a new, uh, something we haven't talked about yet, we get a new LSA type, a type 7, which is specific to a not so stubby area. And the, not, the, the 7 uh, LSA type, it defines the, the ASBR here and how to get to the external networks that are in that ASBR. However, when that 7 hits this uh, area border router here, it transitions, and as it crosses, it goes from a 7 into a 5. So the only place that we will see the type 7 LSAs are in the not so stubby area. Once they hit that area border router, they turn into a 5, and then they're advertised as 5s, whether it's just within the backbone here or if there were other areas, other uh, normal areas attached to the backbone, we would see those 5s transit across those. Now, whenever we create a 5, um, we also have to create a type 4 LSA. So that means that in addition to that 5, we're now creating a type 4 LSA. And that type 4 LSA describes for us how to get to, in the OSBF context, how to get to this ASBR. So the, the 4 and 5 uh, work together. The 4 talks about how to get to the ASBR, and the 5 talks about how to get from the ASBR to the external network. So that's a basic summary of how LSAs are and are not passed with the different area types inside OSPF. Let's now go and talk a little bit about, a little bit more about the different types of, um, of L LSA types here. So uh, this should be review for, for folks, but if you haven't seen it before, we'll just go through it real quick. We have the type 1 LSA, which all OSPF routers uh, send out, and the type 1 LSA they're sending out information about themselves, right? Um, who are their adjacencies and what networks do they know about? The type two LSAs are only sent out uh, by the, uh, the OSPF routers that are uh, designated routers. And they talk to, the designated routers are of course um, connected to some type of a shared medium like ethernet. So, so the, the type two LSA will describe the network that it's connected to, this the shared network that it's connected to. We've already spent some time talking about the Type 3 LSAs, and they basically are the inter-area LSA, so they will describe one area to another area, uh, fundamentally. They, they talk about what is in, what the networks that are in the other areas, and they are created by the area border routers. The Type 4 LSAs are also created by the area border routers. However, they specifically, they are specifically talking about the uh, autonomous system border routers, or the ASBRs that are in a particular area and how to get to that ASBR. <clears throat> the type five LSAs specifically talk about what is the external network that's out here, right? And uh, what information is there, or not what information, but, but what uh, prefixes are there and how to get there. Um, you, whenever you have a type 5 
it talks about how to get to that network you will have a type 4 that talks about so the type 4 will get you to the ASBR and the type 5 will get you to the external network and again the type 7s are specific to the not so stubby areas they're essentially an ASBR that's in a not so stubby area and once again when they cross that um, area border router the 7 turns into a 5, a type 5 LSA. So uh, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, if you look for part 2 we'll go into a demo and actually configure uh, this configuration using uh, Juniper hardware and take a look at what the, the configuration actually looks up. Thank you very much. I hope this was helpful to you. Take care.